name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved, would you say this after me line by line? And remember now, this is the Word of God. It's not my word, it's His Word. And so it's, it's more powerful than a two-edged sword. It's effective. So as you say it, it is a tonic or a medicine inside of you. So this is the beginning of our healing right now. The Word of God really is a medicine. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Come, let us sing to the Lord. And shout with joy to the rock who saves us. And shout with joy to the rock who saves us. Let us approach him with praise and thanksgiving. And sing joyful songs to the Lord. And sing joyful songs to the Lord. The Lord is God, the mighty God. The Lord is God, the mighty God. The great King over all the gods. The great King over all the gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth. And the highest mountains as well. He made the sea, it belongs to him. He made the sea, it belongs to him. The dry land too was formed by his hands. The dry land too was formed by his hands. Notice how the Bible very much is anti-atheism. <laughs> the Bible is so pro-creator. Amen? Amen. And the Bible actually is my Dr. Anton. Good to see you. Hallelujah. I'm glad you made it. Hi, Mama. The Bible says that the fool says in his heart, there is no God. So the question then arises, reading this, are we living in the most, um, amidst the most foolish generation in the history of the world? Yes. We are. And that's important to know that we are, we are surrounded by fools, especially in Washington, D.C. <laughs> I mean, just being honest. It is a dangerous thing when a country is led by fools. Amen? Amen? It's a very dangerous thing. But thank God for God. Amen? Amen? And what did we do to deserve our holy Catholic faith? You see? It is truly the pearl of great price, is it not? I get emotional. Every time I talk, I start getting emotional. To be a priest is like, it's like a double scoop of ice cream, you know what I mean? <laughs> you get a double scoop, one for free. But to, to know the Lord Jesus Christ and to know the one who sent him, brothers and sisters, that's everything. Amen? Amen? And he wants to reveal himself to you and I. God doesn't want to remain a hidden God. He wants to reveal himself to you. On a universal level, of course, like in the Book of Heaven by Luisa Picaretta, but also deep in your heart as an intimate friend. Amen? Amen? And I'm slowly sensing this is the pearl that he wants to give you tonight during our healing service, that he wants to reveal himself to you as a bridegroom. As a bridegroom. As a spouse. See, we have to begin to know God in this way, or our Catholic faith is not yet complete. You might say we begin as children of God, right? Like at baptism, children. And then we grow a little bit older and we become like friends of God, like in confirmation. Then we grow more intimate still and we become, lo and behold, spouses of God. You see, that's a much deeper and more intimate level. So we're going from children of God to friends of God now to spouses of God. Amen? Amen? And we say that, of course, in the most chaste possible manner, but marriage itself should be chaste. Amen? Amen. Marriage is chaste. 
So this beautiful love he's calling you to, and our Lord is speaking to my heart and telling me that some of us tonight were afraid of this, but we do get afraid sometimes of intimacy. It's true, isn't it? We do get afraid of getting too close to some people, even though they may be holy and true and good people. Sometimes we ourselves can't handle the honesty. Amen? And so, thank God he brought you here tonight amongst a group of lovers of God. Amen? Amen. So if you're frightened, just look around. You'll warm up quick enough. We are here because of the flame of love. And the flame of love really was the spousal love of Jesus in the heart of his mother. So Mary was Jesus' little girl. Mary was Jesus' friend. Mary, Jesus' mother, and also, I know it sounds radical, but it's in the writings of the saints, Mary is also the spouse of Christ. Ooh, baby. <laughs> but it's true. We're all, she became his mother in order to become his spouse. You can't marry someone who's not yet born. You see what I mean? <laughs> she became his mother in order to become his spouse, in order that we could become the spouses of God. Amen? Amen. And so I believe that's the healing we're going to be praying for tonight, for the Lord to reveal himself to you in a new way in his intimacy. You have to be tight with God for what's coming. You see, you need to be tight with God. And then you'll have no fear. Amen? Amen. So let's pray a tiny bit more of this amazing psalm. This is Psalm 95. You would say this after me. Come then, let us bow down in worship. Come then, let us bow down in worship. Bending the knee before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God. And we are his people. The flock he shepherds. Today listen, to the voice of the Lord. Today, listen to the voice of the Lord. Does that sound familiar, Flame of Love? Let us listen to the silence together. Another psalm says, Be still and know that I am God. So it seems to me that's a real mark of true intimacy in a marriage. When the man and wife can sit in the same room, they don't need to say a word, and they know exactly what each other is thinking. And she pops up, comes back in with a coffee with two creams and one sugar. <laughs> and he hasn't said a word. And he says, thanks, honey. I love you, Scooby-Doo. <laughs> and she says, how did you know I like Scooby-Doo? <laughs> but they know each other so well that even the twinkle of an eye, they know exactly what's going on. Amen? And we need to be that way with God, you and I. And he wants me to share this with you. It's not just a priest who has this, but you have it too. We are all are called to an intimate union with the Holy One. That's the joy of life. Amen? Amen? If a priest doesn't have that, he's dry bones and he's miserable. Isn't it true? But it's true for every vocation. That's the joy of our life, is living in union with the Holy One. Amen? Amen. And he's beautiful beyond your wildest dreams. Amen? Amen? So I'm going to share with you a couple of the miracles that the Holy One gave me this week. Can I do that? Yes. Now, they're kind of, you know, they're kind of childlike, kind of funny. But that's okay, no? I kind of like the little miracles too, don't you? Yes. Well, you know that new movie that just came out, Sound of Freedom? Yes. If you saw it, would you please raise your holy right hand if you saw it? What a great group. Would you look at this? <laughs> My goodness, I love you. That's fantastic. I was like, 95% of us have seen it. The rest are going to see it tomorrow. Watch. <laughs> what a good group. Amen? Amen? So, you know, I was in South... I just came from South America a few days ago. was preaching down there, so I couldn't see it. It didn't, it didn't open yet down there. I was in Peru and Ecuador. So I, I texted my bookkeeper and said, buy 20 tickets. I don't care what you use them for. You can burn them, but buy them so we can support the movie. Amen? Amen? And we went to a theater in between one of our engagements down there, and it wasn't playing. Everything else raunchy was, but not that one. <laughs> they said, well, Father, let, you know, let us know, and we'll try to get it here. So we did let them know, but I had to leave before that. So I finally got here last week and had to preach in Alabama over the weekend, 
And they went to, I had a little, um, I have a hideaway in Georgia that my friends loaned me, a little house on, on a lake. And I went there for a day and a half. And I, I suddenly remembered after my prayers, I said, oh my goodness, Sound of Freedom. And there's a theater in this little town. So I, I checked it out real quick and it was playing that night. My only night off, like in months, is playing right down the street. And I said, Lord, can I go? <laughs> He's my boss, you know what I mean? He's my best friend, my father, my boss, and our spouse as well. So he said, yes, this is the time to go. I love the way he said that, this is the time to go. So I jumped in, in my car, I should say Our Lady's car. I have a vow of poverty, it's her car. So I, I jumped in Our Lady's car, went down there, and sure enough, it's playing, I get in line, and I said, one for Sound of Freedom. He says, and I went to I took out my wallet, and the wallet that's now missing. I took out my wallet, and he said, Father, all the movies are free tonight. How did that happen? <laughs> oh, every seat was free of all the movies in the theater that night. And the Lord told me, remember, he said, this is the night. <laughs> he was not like winking at me. I didn't see the wink, you know. <laughs> Isn't he beautiful? Yes. And so these are the kind of things that happen when we follow Jesus as father, as friend, and as bridegroom. In other words, he becomes your everything. He's not just another friend, right? Your wife is your closest friend. And it even goes beyond natural matrimony. It's a supernatural matrimony. And he becomes your joy and your food. He becomes your breathing. Amen? Amen. I'll share with you another one that happened right before that. I, I just finished preaching in Alabama over the weekend, last weekend. And I had Monday to travel and I was traveling by car. And anyway, I said, Lord, I, I had a message. I had another emergency, uh, a really rough situation in my family. And a, one of my great nephews was mauled by a dog. It's unbelievable. Everything is getting ready to, to prepare to come here. And it was quite a horrific situation. And so I changed my driving to go, not to my rector, but go to northern Georgia where my niece lives and to go minister to them and her nephew. And um, the pictures, of course, were horrific. The dog got his face, you see. And I mean, it's like a nightmare. I, I, would, I wouldn't show the pictures to anybody. They're that bad. And so I, I went, I just changed my course and went up there to North Georgia near the Tennessee border. And I was with my niece and I was going to pray over the little boy. And um, the doctors did not want us to be around him. They said, there's too much of a chance of infection for anybody to be near him. So I asked the Lord what to do. I'm gonna show you how great your God is. And what came to me was I need to buy him a, a little car and a little truck to play with. So I found the nearest store um, and I bought some beautiful little cars and trucks for him, you know, like four or five, but pretty, pretty big size, you know. And I blessed them. See, his mother, his mother is not yet Catholic. Not yet. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> and so, have you ever prayed over tiny cars? <laughs> when I become Pope, I'm going to put a new blessing in the ritual, the blessing of toy cars. Because <laughs> look what happened. I prayed over the cars, and I gave them to the grandmother of the little boy to give to him. And I prayed over his pictures, prayed over the cars. She gave it to him. The next day, she sent me the picture of the little boy. His face is like 97% healed. Oh. In that picture, I could show you that little boy smiling from ear to holding his new cars. And I couldn't, and I've seen a lot of miracles. I see them daily. I, I couldn't believe the difference on the little boy's face. Unbelievable. How God healed him through an, an act of charity, right? Little cars and a priestly blessing. And God healed him overnight. Amen? Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Now, I'll share with you one more, one, one more little miracle because it's good for you to know these things so you know how God operates in our lives. 
And that's not just for, for me, it's for everyone who loves the Lord. We want to have an intimate friendship with God, letting Him guide all of our steps, all of our steps, like whether you even go out or not of your house. Whether you go to this restaurant or to that restaurant can make a huge difference. You go to this restaurant, and there's somebody there who is dying for salvation. And God puts you there because you're there for that waiter or that waitress. Amen? Amen. So I've seen that many times. So dealing with this with my little nephew, and he was perfectly healed, I had a few hours off, finally. I said, Lord, you know what I want to do? I want to go to the bookstore. I love books and good books. And with all my traveling, I had not been able to get to any bookstore in many, many months. So if I get to a good bookstore once or twice a year, that's a treat for me. I like, like a Barnes & Noble's bookstore. I love that. Or, and or the Catholic bookstores. And so there was one right down the street. I stopped at a convent to pray to make my holy hours as I was driving. I prayed for there with the nuns for two hours, and I had a few hours free. I said, Lord, I really want to go to that bookstore. Is that from you? And he said, yes. <laughs> You've been a good boy, <laughs> and you can go. And I said, thank you, Papa. And I went to the bookstore, and the way that God arranges things is it's 7 p.m., and it closes at 9. So he, he does that to protect me, because if I go there at 7 in the morning, I'll be there all day. <laughs> Just two hours, all I had. So, well, I'm not going to worry. I don't have that much money anyway. I'm going to look around, and God, you guide me. And I found an amazing new book on world history, and another new book about time, and some beautiful Christian books, and a new imprint of the Bible for Catholics in large print. I, I just stockpiled them. I had like 12 books there. I said, whoa, mm, I might need to make a decision here. These are really good ones, and I was just wanting to have some good books and chew up and eat them. It's better than food, you know what I mean? And I'm looking at them, and some guy walks down the, the aisle. It's about it's 8.45 now. It's going to close in 15 minutes, and, and I didn't want to interfere with what he was looking at, and I, I wanted to keep focus on my prayer, and I said, wait a minute. Maybe he needs a smile. I better not do that. You know, I, I didn't want to intrude on his privacy, but sometimes that's the wrong way to think. So I looked and I just smiled at him and he said, Father Jim! <laughs> this is happening to me all over the world now. It's really embarrassing. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I was eating in a, in a restaurant in the middle of Budapest, in the middle of nowhere, in a hole in the wall with my friends hiding, eating a dinner, and a guy over there sits up and says, You're Father Jim! <laughs> I'm in Hungary, Budapest! Oh my gosh. So I'm not used to this quite yet, you know what I mean? He screams. Father, I'm Protestant, but I've been to your events all over the place. <laughs> he said, I've been wanting to meet you. I had a dream with you in my dream two weeks ago. He's a Protestant. And I asked God if I could meet you. Uh, can you imagine this? I said, Lord, is this a time for Barnes and Nobles? <laughs> and he says, yes, son, you've been a good boy. It's time. Look what he had arranged. So we had quite a talk, and he said, Father, can I help you? Can I get one for you? I said, well, I looked at all my books. I said, well, the Bible is the most important one, the brand new large print Bible. Here, I, I could use this new Bible. I said, oh, sure, Father, you got it. And I took the rest of them. I didn't know whether to hide them, you know, <laughs> or maybe I could buy a couple of them, you know. I do have an emergency credit card, but I know that's an emergency. So I'm wondering what to do, is, and I, I walk with him up to the counter to pay for the Bible, is, and, and he took them out of my hand, all the other books, and he put them on there. I said, no, no, Father, no, I'm doing this, Father. You let me do this. He bought more than, two, more than $300 worth of books for me. Wow. Right then and there. <laughs> now, of course... That's the generosity of God's people, isn't it? We see that all the time. That's the generosity of God's people. And I believe he'll be coming into the Catholic Church soon. <laughs> he now has my number and I have his. <laughs> but isn't that beautiful, the overwhelming generosity of God himself? 
And he says, to tell you, let me do this for you. Only goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. Is it true? I experience it constantly. Only goodness and kindness shall follow us all the days of our life. Amen? Amen. Isn't it nice to know that the Word of God is not just a pretty poem, but it's absolute reality? Amen? Amen? Absolute reality. Goodness and kindness follow us all the days of our life. So I sent my friends to the airport in Atlanta as I got here. Others were on the phone, on the computer, scrambling to find it as I was getting ready for you all. And lo and behold, the head of my team in Atlanta, David, Dr. Dr. David Colart, he and his wife went to the airport to see if they could find it. I sort of remembered how I, how I misplaced it through the security line. And um, we didn't know though if anybody found it, just found it in the basket and took it off. We didn't know that. But my, one of my secretaries says, Father Jim, no, no, don't say that. We're claiming, we're claiming that it's safe and no one took it. I said, okay, all right, I stand corrected. And David and Kathy went to look they bumped into the man, they bumped into the man who found my wallet. <laughs> in the busiest airport in the world, the Atlanta airport is the number one airport in the world. They bumped into the very man who found my wallet. <laughs> Only goodness and kindness follow us all the days of our life. Amen. <laughs> Only goodness and kindness. Only goodness and kindness all the days of our life. Amen. As for all of us, amen? amen? I just stand as a representative of you, all of us. He wants this loving friendship with you, amen? amen? He says, I'm knocking on the door. If any man openeth, I will come in and sup with him, amen? amen? And so this is a call to intimacy with the divine Savior, a call to intimacy. As I anoint you tonight, will you permit me to pray for that as I pray over you? And of course, we see lots of miracles. In Alabama last week, a man couldn't walk, and he, had, he came back in the healing service halfway through, and they stopped the healing service. He had to testify. This man had been in several car accidents, had broken every bone in his body, he said. He was completely healed, no pain for the first time in 15 years, walking and smiling and preaching like a bishop. And he came back and, and just to testify what God, we only halfway through the service, he was already completely healed. Amen? Amen? And so I don't know what God's going to do, but he keeps doing great things. And I trust him. I, I don't trust myself, but I trust him. As I go to pray over you, I want to ask for this divine intimacy and what the Lord has led me to do recently. I'll share this with you. And I want to share it with my brother priests around the world. As I anoint God's people in the last couple of months, what I've been led to do is this, because if you read the Book of Heaven, which has two sets of imprimaturs now, right? The second one from the Vatican. When you read that, the Lord says, those words, divine will, encompass within them the greatest goods in all of eternity. And those two words, the greatest goods are encompassed right there. It's the greatest gift I'll ever give to man, is to live in the divine will, which is the fullness of the Holy Spirit. It's coming. He said, the whole world will be like the Garden of Eden. And she says that in the book. Amen? Amen? So you know what I've started to do? I pray over each person now around the world, the sign of the cross, and I whisper, divine will. Divine will. Divine will. The Lord says, all goods are contained within the divine will. All goods, including the coming victory and your becoming a saint. Amen? So as I go to anoint you in just a moment, I'm going to pray divine will over you. Amen? Amen? That all that means anything could happen. Healings on any level can and will happen. But most of all, we want an intimacy with God because that's why he made you. He didn't make you like to be like a pretty ornament. He didn't make you to be like a plaything. He made you because he wanted you. And he wants you because he loves you. And he loved you from before all eternity. Before he made the stars and the sun and the moon, he thought of you and made them after he thought of you to fit you. Amen? Amen. That's what it's all about. He so loved the world that he sent his only son, that whosoever should believe in him might not perish, but might receive eternal life. 
And the Son so loved the world that he gave you his only spirit, that you living in his spirit and his spirit living in you would become divinized. Amen? Amen. That's a Catholic theological word with an imprimatur. We are to become divinized. Amen? Amen. Alleluia. The Lord says that's enough. <laughs> so let's pray the Angelus as a preparation for our healing, okay? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And the Word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Please pray for us, most holy Mother of God. That we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and his cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, would you say this holy prayer after me line by line for our protection? My adorable Jesus, My adorable Jesus may, our feet journey together. may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our, hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our eyes, I'm sorry, someone help me. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. What was going through my mind was this. I was in Budapest a few months ago where the prayer came from, and I met with Cardinal Peter Erdo. We actually have really become friends. It's like my fourth or fifth meeting with him. I shared with Cardinal Erdo my experiences with this prayer, and he was visibly moved. And that's when the Virgin said to me, now. I said, Cardinal, with your permission, I want to give you a gift. He says, yes, Father. I want to give you one million Flame of Love Unity prayer cards for the people of Budapest. He said, I graciously accept. <laughs> and he's a very shy man. He doesn't normally do that, to be honest with you. So I got some money in as quick as I could within a week, and we negotiated. And you know, even the priest, you gotta be a little bit sly, even as a priest, then the, you know, negotiate a little bit more. That sounds too high to me. We kept negotiating. I finally got him down like to $9,000 for 1 million. Pretty good, you know? And I sent the money over, and my negotiators learned so well what I was doing, they continued the negotiations. <laughs> we got 2 million printed. For the same amount of money. 
So I was here in Malvern just a, just a month or two ago for another retreat, and I asked the good people on Sunday morning, I got permission from Michael from Malvern to take a collection, because I was leaving from here and went straight down to South America from here. So we took a collection, we raised about $10,000. And I spoke to the mayor of Lima, one of the largest cities in the entire world. I met with the mayor there. They're, they're having a, some trouble with communists and violence. I said, Mr. Mayor, what you need is the unity prayer. So they had me speak to him and his, his council in a group. So in front of everyone, I sort of cornered him. I said, and now, Mr. Mayor, I want to give to you, with your permission, the gift of one million unity prayer cards for the people of Lima. He said, yes, Father, I accept. They're already done and printed. They're already in his office now. One million. So, on my way leaving Peru, I met with another bishop. He's a brand new bishop, and we had a, we, somehow we snuck in to get an appointment with him. He was very, very busy. And we had a beautiful conversation, a very, very humble bishop in Chiclayo, a city north of Lima. And I spoke to Bishop. I said, Bishop, now I come from a large family and a poor family. I really do. And I, 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 I have a great feeling for the poor. And I want to help your people and get them protected. I share with him my experiences with that prayer with exorcisms. Other experiences I've had, like with Mother Teresa's nuns, when one of their nuns was put in jail in India. I don't know if you heard about that. They couldn't get her out. The mother superior, the general, met with me in Atlanta. I said, Mother, you need the unity prayer. I gave her several thousand the next day. All the Mission of Charity prayed the prayer the following week. She was released immediately. After months and months of fighting. So I shared that story with the mayor. So we just delivered one million to his offices. Now, now the same thing to the bishop, the same story. I said, Bishop, I want to give you one million for your diocese. Yes, Father, you have my complete mission to do whatever you want. Come back whenever you want, do whatever you want. You have my permission. <laughs> and yes, we'll take one million. I says, now, aren't you also from Lima, Bishop? Don't you still have both dioceses right now? Yes, I do. Can I give you one million for the other one? <laughs> yes, Father. So I need you tomorrow to help me print two million for South America. Can we do that? And I'll explain more tomorrow. I'll explain more, but that unity prayer is a gift to you and I that brings protection and peace. I just got a report yesterday, I don't know if you saw that. A woman whose relatives were sick uh, in Africa, the little boy was dying of cancer, supposed to go in for surgery this week. She sent over the unity prayer by cell phone to Africa. They began praying the unity prayer. The boy has been completely healed. The tumor disappeared with the unity prayer. So we're going to pray the prayer one more time, the unity prayer, and then we'll start our healing. That anything attacking you or your family, as I'm speaking to you, I'm sensing ancestral curses over many of us tonight, ancestral bondage. Let's ask our Lord and Lady to break that bondage that might block your healing. Amen? Amen. Let's say it again now. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My adorable Jesus. May our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together. To gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. And the answer would be, save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us and the whole world. 
most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us and the whole world. O Jesus, I surrender myself to you. O oh, 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 Jesus, I surrender my family to you. O oh, Jesus, I surrender my family to you. Take care of everything. O oh, Jesus, I surrender my family to you. Take care of everything. O oh, Jesus, I surrender my family to you. Take care of everything. O oh, Jesus, I surrender my family to you. Take care of 